Today we're going to be testing the boundaries of a C1 Fan Light Kit wattage limiter, which is a little device that prevents you from using higher wattage bulbs than a certain specification. I'm not exactly sure how it works offhand. I'm guessing it's some type of a thermal protection unit, but maybe we'll find out for certain as we take a closer look. I've never worked with one of these things before. I think this is one of, or perhaps the only C1 fan I have that's new enough to have one of these stinking things. Here's the apparatus itself. It is called a power limiter, 70 watts max. The brand is Dawn Sun, or the Dusk Moon, model EFU185SET. And it says TA is less than or equal, or less than, maybe less than or equal to it. It's the in, uh, engraving there isn't too clear. 95 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot. Um, but I suppose if an incandescent bulb was used, this whole housing would get quite warm. 70 watts is the uh, power rating. And this is quite large. I wanted to take this out of here just because it's annoying to try to fit in here. It just makes everything too cramped. So let's put some light bulbs in here and see how this responds. Now the fan itself shipped with a DEL bulb, which I think was a 9 watts. So this is way over, you know, 70 watts is way over what you would need for a 9 watt DEL. But I find that kind of interesting because that does give you enough leeway to, to use a basic old school 60 watts incandescent bulb. And depending on how sensitive this is, you could potentially also use a uh, 72 watts halogen bulb, which allegedly has the brightness equivalents for whatever that's worth of a 100 watts incandescent bulb. So let's get the power meter set up here so we can see how much power we're drawing. We need the light wire and the common. We'll plug in the common and I'll plug in the high side. And let's see, do I have any? I'm not sure if I have any 100 watt bulbs on hand. Let's start with a um, with a 75. Hopefully that bulb isn't burnt out. I think this bulb is burnt out. That's why I kept it, you know, because that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so that bulb is burnt out. Um, let's see if I have any more somewhere else. Here's a 72 watts halogen bulb, which is 2 watts above. Well, that worked pretty quick. It didn't even give me enough time to, to um, check the unit, the power consumption. So I heard like a click in there, like a relay click. Um, I don't know if that's a one-time use apparatus. I would find it hard to believe that a thermal unit could operate that quickly for just two watts over the claimed um, spec. Now I'm noticing that this is consuming 0.8 watts with nothing connected to it. It's pulling enough um, current to get a power factor reading out of it. So I wonder if this is electronic in some way. And if, I mean, 0.8 watts is not a lot of power at all, but for that to be running all the time, that will add up over the course of a year. All right, so it seems to be a, it seems to reset when you turn the power off and back on. So we know it takes about, 
It takes about two seconds to respond to the 72 watts bulb, which is just a couple watts over the claimed um, the, the claim spec. So it, it must be very precise. So now let's try a 300 watts bulb and see if it responds any quicker. So this, of course, is way over um, what it's what it's rated for, and this gets so hot, I really don't want it to be touching anything, even for two seconds. All right, so there's our 300 watts bulb, and here we go. So that did respond a little bit quicker. So I suspect it probably is some type of a thermal, thermal based controller. Now I'm going to plug this into a variac so that we can reduce the voltage. And I want to reduce the voltage going to that 72 watts bulb to try to make it consume exactly 70 watts. So I'm going to bring this fixture into the picture temporarily and I'm going to plug back in the 72 watts bulb and uh, this needs to go uh, this is now this can go here because we're not going to drop the voltage that much and now what I want to do is I want to see how precise is this unit if we tune this down right to 70 watts will it hold so let's see here. Hmm, that's giving me 66 watts. Sixty-six watts. So this thing might actually be a fair bit more sensitive than it claims, because this bulb is only consuming sixty-six point five the watts, and it's already cutting it off. And it really shouldn't be. It should not be cutting off until seventy. Now even with the bulb turned off. The stupid wattage limiter is still pulling 0 0.3 the watts. So I'm going to see if I can get it. I'm not sure if this meter responds quick enough, but let's see. Well, the meter went up to 65 and then it cut off. And curiously enough, that wattage limiter now draws 0.8 the watts with it cut off. So I guess it must use a little bit of wattage to close that, or rather to open that relay. Alright, so that kind of foiled my test case. What wattage is this? This is a 60 watts bulb. So that's allegedly pulling 64 watts now. So it seems like that wattage limiter actually does something to the bulb that causes it to consume a little more power. It seems okay with the 60 watts bulb, which in the unit's defense, and that's kind of what these were always limited to with 60 watts. So at least, you know, these, this style of, of fan, just a basic little 42 inch fan with a single globe, those are usually 60 watts anyways. So, in the unit's defense, this does allow you to use a 60 watts incandescent bulb, but anything beyond that um, is no good. Which I suppose is logical enough, but not quite what I would have expected. I want to cancel this out of here because this thing is stupid. So, we have quite a few wires 
connected to this thing and they're all not, not managed very nicely. This will be much easier to close the whole switch housing here once this dumb thing is out. So we're going to have to take this common. Actually, can we just cancel that common out entirely? I think so. So this blue wire needs to just go to this blue wire. So let's take this, see if I can undo this. Sometimes these things can be undone and redone. Sometimes they can't. This time we might get lucky with it. So we'll take that out of there. And then on the other side of this, take this out of here. So this one I'm not getting too lucky with recrimping this back on. Maybe if I twist these wires together it'll hold better. These are dissimilar metals it looks like. That's not a great idea. Okay, it actually worked pretty good. So now the light is just connected to the power without all this other nonsense. And we should find that now the switch housing is much easier to close. Because there was so much pressure in here before, you can actually see that the wire has become all chewed up from uh, the force of where it bends into the extra full switch housing. That's kind of a safety hazard in of itself. So now this should just, yeah, it just closes real easy. This is not lined up properly, but if it's lined up properly, it closes very easily. So that's much better. So here's our stupid wattage limiter. Let's see if we can open this up and find out what's inside looks like it might be able to be popped open a little tab here which I think just broke but that's fine okay so it looks like there is um, a couple capacitors and a relay does this just come out of here oh yeah it does that's cool that's a pretty simple uh, circuit board here. Not much on there. It's like it's dated 2014 so this is a pretty old design. So there's a relay, there's some capacitors, and then uh, I don't know if it's electronically monitoring the power consumption. Maybe somebody can identify what that chip is. I don't know. I'm not familiar with this chip.
the 3 amp relay 24 volts so I guess it must have a some kind of a switching power supply in here which is probably what's using up to 0.3 watts to operate that relay well it's dumb I don't like it the not okay but now the fan is better because it doesn't have that nonsense anymore <laughs>